To establish the correct parameters for the elbow examination, I also need to select the appropriate probe. I will select the L145 linear array probe, the MSK application, and the elbow preset. Remember you can make further changes to optimize the image by opening the favorites drawer to make changes to the depth, the frequency, the overall gain, and the number of focal points. Patient positioning for most of the elbow examination is as you see here, the patient is supine on the table with a soft towel for a bolus underneath the elbow. Also it raises it up uh, for better probe uh, manipulation and then with a slight flexion of the elbow to look at the lateral epicondyle. Probe placement for the lateral epicondyle image is going to be longitudinal or long axis. We're going to come in a direct lateral to medial scan plane, longitudinal, visualizing the bony landmarks of the slope of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus on the left. On the right side of the image, you'll see this flattened convexity of the radial head. At times, pronation, supination maneuvers help you visualize very clearly the radial head. The much longer, by comparison, common extensor tendon is seen spanning the joint space and extending out at its synthesis along the attachment of the lateral epicondyle on the left. After performing the lateral epicondyle image, the next common thing to do is to do the medial epicondyle imaging to evaluate the common flexor tendon and the anterior band of the UCL. So if the patient is still in the supine position on the table, we simply externally rotate the arm with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees and easily expose the medial elbow section. After positioning the patient, we will palpate the medial epicondyle of the humerus, place the probe in an oblique longitudinal orientation in front of or anterior to the medial epicondyle. And on the ultrasound image, we visualize the curved cortical margin of the medial epicondyle on the left as it dips deeply into the humeral trochlea and then to the right of the image we see the end of the humeral cortex and then the short cortical margin of the ulna just to the right of that and this is going to be the anterior band of the UCL that is deep on this image more superficial at the upper portion of the medial epicondyle is the much shorter common flexor tendon that is attaching to the medial epicondyle. Selecting the appropriate presets for the hand and wrist examination, once again we select the correct probe. The linear 14.5 probe is most optimal. We choose the musculoskeletal application and the wrist preset. Pressing the favorites drawer opens up our ability to change the depth, the frequency, the overall gain, and the number of focal points. One of the most common images to perform in the wrist and hand scanning protocol is to visualize the median nerve in short axis probe placement just before it advances into the carpal tunnel. The patient positioning is going to be with the palm turned up in supination. It's very important to put a small towel or a bolus under the wrist to keep it in neutral posture, not in extension or flexion. We place the probe in a short axis orientation right at the crease created by the flexor retinaculum. The left side of the image is radial, the right side of the image is ulnar. We look for the very superficial, centrally located median nerve, described many times as the starry night or honeycomb appearance, found many times within the cluster of all of the flexor tendons. If there's difficulty in distinguishing the median nerve from the surrounding tendons, you can very easily distinguish it by asking the patient to slowly flex their thumb back and forth. And as they flex their thumb, they activate the flexor pollicis tendon and then go superficial and to the right, and that will guide you to the median nerve in short axis. One of the most common sites in the hand and wrist to evaluate for erosive disease uh, in arthritic conditions is the dorsal metacarpal phalangeal joint. Patient positioning is as you see here with the hand pronated to expose the dorsum of the hand. We want to place a longitudinal probe across the joint space here to visualize the extensor compartment and also the uh, joint space as well. It's also important at times once you place the probe on the patient to stabilize the joint from the palmar aspect. Stabilizing the patient's hand at the second metacarpal phalangeal joint on the palmar aspect, with an adequate amount of gel, we place the probe longitudinally 
across the joint space and immediately see the bony margins of the joint. The left side of the image is proximal, the right side is distal. We see the cortical margin of the proximal side of the joint, the metacarpal neck, which is normal, that is not an erosion. We can see the convexity of the metacarpal head reading to the right of that, and then distally we see the phalange going off to the right of the image. Within the joint space going up to the top, we see the, the synovium as a homogeneous triangular region within the joint space, and then the fibers of the extensor tendon superficial to the synovium and the joint capsule.